off this evening is Megan Lofty Eaton, and she'll be talking about the uh, Akagera National Park in Rwanda. Uh, this is a park run by African Parks, which is a, um, a successful nonprofit conservation organization. Um, Megan um, is the communication, social media, and citizen science coordinator for the uh, BDI. And um, she, prior to this, she coordinated the Odonata map, one of the um, more successful um, uh, of the virtual museum projects, um, and uh, also the Atlas of African Odonata. Um, before that, she, well, at the same time, I think she was also coordinating the Lepi map, another uh, large uh, projects of the virtual museum. And um, uh, she really enjoys being outdoors and uh, she's coming to us this evening from Cape Town. Um, she's actually a bush person, but recently made the move for work purposes uh, down to Cape Town after studying there. And I know that she misses the bush. And, um, but uh, tonight she has, uh, she has some support from her friends back in the bush. Um, Megan uh, visited or spent time in Akagera uh, a number of years ago, and um, I'm sure she's really enjoyed reliving uh, those memories in preparing for this presentation this evening. Um, her presentation is entitled The Land of a Thousand Hills. Megan, over to you. We really look forward to uh, hearing what you have to share with us this evening. Uh, thank you, Rick. Okay, so um, my talk this evening is a bit more of a like show and tell. Um, I was lucky enough to spend a month um, in Akagera National Park in Rwanda in 2015. Um, a good friend of mine, um, is a fish biologist and at the time he worked in Bangwelu in Zambia which is also managed by African Parks and they asked him to come up to Akagira to help out there with the fisheries project. So I went along with him and I'm going to share, you, share with you some of the amazing wildlife sightings and bird sightings that we had while we were in the field there. For the month. It was during, it was August, August 2015. So first up is to orientate ourselves where exactly is Rwanda. So it's a very, very small Eastern African country and it's quite close to the equator. Uh, as you can see, it's like outlined there, the little blue, very, very small country. I mean, if you compare it to South Africa, um, I guess it's about the same size as, as uh, Swaziland. And to zoom in a bit more on, on Rwanda and to show you where exactly Akagera National Park is located. Uh, so Akagera is on the eastern edge of, of Rwanda and is bordered by Tanzania um, on, its, on its most easterly edge. And, and it's, I mean, it's just an amazing park uh, that's like dotted with, with wetlands, um, this massive like wetland lake ecosystem towards the east of the park and in the north, north uh, western corner you've got these grassy hills and then towards the south it's like thickets and forests. So there's this amazing variety of landscapes and habitats. Um, and yeah, like, like uh, Rick mentioned, it's, it's managed by African Parks, uh, which is a a non-profit conservation organization. Um, but Akagera started a long time ago. It was first established in 1934. And like I mentioned, it's just this great mosaic of savanna and mountains and swamps. Um, and it was originally much bigger, about 250,000 hectares. Um, but then it was reduced in 1997 to give some land back to the refugees that returned to Rwanda after the terrible genocide that happened in 1994, which I'm sure most of us are aware of, um, a terrible tragedy, tragedy that happened in that country. Um, but I must say the Rwandan people have come out the other side stronger um, and they're amazing people. Uh, so African Parks took over the management of the park in 2009 Along with that came the construction of a 120 
kilometer western boundary fence. And the main reason for this was the reintroduction of lions in July 2015. And now we visited the park in August 2015, so we were so privileged and so lucky to see the brand new lions. <laughs> and the whole of Rwanda even was quite excited when, well, when you arrived at the, in Kigali at the airport, there was this massive <laughs> billboard up with these two zebras with like these massive eyeballs looking quite frightened. <laughs> and it just said at the bottom, the lions are back. <laughs> So, I mean, Akagera used to have a population of around 300 lions, but because of the what happened during the Civil War, um, the wildlife populations were decimated and lions were went extinct locally. So it's quite a it's quite a great thing that lions are back back now, and they've even reintroduced uh, black rhino as well. So I'm going to take you through some of the photos that I took while we were in the park. Just give you an idea of what it looks like there and also show you like some of the awesome uh, wildlife and bird life that that we came across so first the landscapes there's this amazing mosaic of of freshwater lakes um, and swamps which obviously <laughs> leads to a massive diversity in plant life and bird life um, there's these expansive swamps all along from the north to the south of the park and it's actually the largest protected wetland in eastern central africa which is great um then there's these massive grassy plains um and in this photo <laughs> it's a very typical scene um that you get in the park of topi standing uh, they love standing like on these uh um these termite mounds and they and they kind of it's it's part of the territory and they keep their lookout it's very very cool and then there's also um more towards the north of the park you get you get these massive rolling hills uh, and that's something that rwanda is very um it's well known for and that's where that term actually comes from the land of a thousand hills it's this very 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 hilly country <laughs> And there's just another topi standing proud. And then towards the south of the park, you get this amazing like uh, forest thicket habitat and you're more like forest type species, um, especially in terms of birds. Then on to some of the cool mammals uh, that I managed to photograph in the park. Here we've got a lovely rowan. They're definitely one of my favorite, favorite antelope and even some nice red bulled ox peckers sitting on his bum. <laughs> then also got to see some topi. And here's a nice, <laughs> a nice photo I got of, of a young, of a baby topi suckling on his mom. Uh, there they've got the Matha giraffe, uh, different, different to the giraffe that we get here in South Africa. And the impala that we saw there, amazing i mean <laughs> all all the males had these massive massive horns <laughs> i mean just look look at those horns it's it's definitely impressive and lots of buffalo in the park and i managed to capture this <laughs> this quite this fun picture of these uh, yellow bold ox peckers just riding along on this buffalo um, and we we observed them for quite a while, just chattering away. <laughs> They're quite funny birds to to watch. Speaker In, <laughs> did they produce bones on the buffalo? Sorry. Yeah, so, someone muted like, me. Did the ox pickers did they produce bones on the buffaloes or not? So did they harm them or not? Um, no, so not with this particular buffalo, but ox pectors, um, they are known to, to sometimes hurt the animals a little bit. Um, so they do, they do, they can keep wounds open for a bit, but not, not to such an extent where the animal, animal's life is, um, threatened. So, yeah, but mostly, mostly, I mean, the, the plus side is much bigger than the, the negative where, I mean, the, they help to keep, 
ticks and all sorts of irritating other like insects and stuff at bay. So more more good than harm. Bye, <laughs> Dante. <laughs> Placer. <laughs> Um, then there was this old um, elephant bull in the park, which which used to so so this elephant has a bit of a history. It actually came across from from Congo and was part of a herd of um, young elephants that were taken away from their herd and like grew up with people. So they're quite used to people, and then they try to rehabilitate these elephants. But because he's so used to people, he kind of causes a lot of trouble in the park. <laughs> and this one day we were, we were returning back to the headquarters and he was standing in the middle of the road in this like really thick, thicket area. So we couldn't, we couldn't um, drive past him. So we had to like wait there. And he was so on purpose, like he knew obviously we can't, we can't do anything and we can't pass him and we just have to wait now. So he was probably busy. He would just stood there in the road, like being all on purpose uh, for at least like 40 minutes. And then eventually he was like, okay, this is boring now. So, <laughs> so he decided to leave. Um, also got great sightings of spotted hyena, which is great. They're one of my favorite animals. Then, of course, we got to see the new lions, or back then they were still really new, like a month. Um, we were there, there was a film crew at the time, um, just filming like their, their movements and, and how they are adapting to their new environment. Um, it was great to see them, and we, and we came across them the one morning when they just made a fresh water kill. As you can see on the photo on the right hand side of that female, she's got some like blood on her leg still, and that's from the warthog. It's not, it's not her being injured or anything. And yeah, we were so enthralled, and and the um, camera crew took us with them uh, for a bit that morning. And when we wanted to return to our own bucky, whoop dee, <laughs> the line was waiting, and yeah, obviously we had to. We had to wait a bit for her to move on before we could return to our bucky. Uh, then also got to see some Defasa water buck, which that's completely diff or different to the water buck we get in, in South Africa. Um, our water buck have like a, a white ring um, on their bums, where the Defasa water buck has like a complete white patch. Then also had a super interesting sighting um, of a thick-tailed bush baby, uh, but it was completely melanistic, so completely uh, black in color. So that was that was quite a unique sighting that we got and um, photographed him like at the headquarters. So very very cool. Uh, then on to the bird life. So had some amazing bird sightings, and most of the birds I saw were lifers as well. Um, like, for instance, this brown chested lapwing. I mean, it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous bird, like this amazing golden uh, color on his chest. Very cool. Also, got to see a Ruha uh, cat. <laughs> Not sure how to say it, but yeah, it's such an amazing, amazing bird. Um, and I think, I think they're quite, they don't have a very large distribution. They, they actually, uh, quite restricted to a little small patch in, in Eastern Africa. Then also got to see some red cheek cordon bleus, or uh, we, we know them bet better as wax balls uh, in South Africa. But yeah, this one was just taking a nice, a nice bath outside uh, the room we were staying in. Also got to see, got some nice sightings of yellow-throated long claw, spot-flanked barbet, very cool. Uh, not a bird that we get in South Africa. So for me, that was very exciting. Um, the photo on the left is my photo. The photo on the right is just one that I got from, I think, from Wikipedia, just to show, <laughs> just to get a bit of an idea of what the red-faced barbet looks like. Very, very cool bird. Uh, spur wing, lap wing. So all these birds to me, it was very exciting because <laughs> they were all new. I've never, I'd never seen these birds before. Uh, slender bolt weaver, amazing, amazing bird. Black-headed gonalek. Uh, I mean, before I'd only read about gonaleks in books and I'd always wanted to see them for real. So it was very special to me. 
also got to see bare-faced go away bird <laughs> so cool <laughs> and an eastern gray plantain eater um their their bowls like look like bananas so <laughs> very very um gorgeous birds rupal starling got to see oh and then this one it was my my complete and ultimate favorite because uh, i remember when i was still doing my undergraduate degree in canada and i was quite miserable in the winter and i was missing africa a lot and for my one um course which dealt with wetlands um we could do like any any project we could we could pick a project as long as it was wet, wetland related and so i did a project um on wetlands in africa and then this bird <laughs> uh, came up in one of the chapters in my project and it is of course the papyrus gonalek <laughs> which uh, we managed to to call it out we, we played a call on on a cell phone and and two of them just popped out of the papyrus <laughs> it was such an exciting moment and we got a pretty good look at them and they were like flitting around and popping in and out of the papyrus so so yeah i'll never ever forget that moment it was very special the, oh, <laughs> of course there was the other not so nice things <laughs> The park um, is definitely full of tsetse flies and, and it's a love-hate relationship. They love me and I hate them. <laughs> Got bitten many times. Um, but I must also say that tsetse flies do actually play an important role in wildlife conservation because they tend to keep uh, people and people's cattle out of wildlife areas, because of course they do carry um, sleeping sickness, which is a problem. <laughs> so tsetse flies also help to, I guess, keep wild areas more wild. Um, oh, but then, so, so in the park, in some places they set up these um, blue and black um, tops and they spray like a bit of poison on it and and uh, sexy flies are very visual they're attracted to to especially like big shapes um if you're driving in your vehicle they get attracted to the vehicle and they get attracted to these um blue and black tops um and then yeah they get they get onto the poison and then it kills it kills them there on the spot so it just, ha it just helps to control them a bit um then, so, so the main reason we were there was for fish research. Um, Akagirop National Park was looking at how to, to sustainably um, use the fish resources in the park to help the people that, that live like on the boundaries of the park. So that they have, um, you know, that there's like some economic um, and monetary um, incentive for them to understand like why conservation is important and why we we are protecting the park and then they get something out of it through through the through food and also to sell the fish for money um and when you do it in a sustainable way then obviously it can it can um, support communities for years to come um and yeah the lakes in this park is amazing the diversity of fish and the health of the of the fish populations is just incredible saw so many different kinds of fish um, also ate a lot of fish and it's good fish like it's you can you can really like taste it's it's healthy and happy fish <laughs> um yeah just some examples of of some of the fish species mostly tilapia uh, that we got uh, when we're doing the surveys and of course as i mentioned ate a lot of fish <laughs> all sorts of fish cooked in all sorts of ways um but it was great it was really it was really a wonderful experience um another thing that uh, that people eat in rwanda which is a staple is the plantain or cooking banana and just the other day i was mentioning to someone that i wish we we would we could get this banana in south africa or more freely available anyway in south africa um, so they, in Rwanda, they eat it like, like you would eat a potato. Uh, they boil it, they mash it, they, they even make, they fry it for, like chips. Um, and it's very good. Very, very good. And this is a typical example of a Rwandan meal. Lots of beans, 
beans and plantain, bananas and fish, if you can get it. <laughs> and there was just me consuming a <laughs> gigantic pile of beans. <laughs> and the baboons came to say hi, just to see if we maybe leave something behind for them. And yes, in case you were wondering, I did manage to see some gorillas. <laughs> but thank you, that was my, my talk, my show and tell for the evening, and I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. Many thanks, Megan. Fantastic. Uh, as I said earlier, I think it's, uh, it's wonderful for us to be able to <clears throat> visit places such as Akagera through this, uh, through this platform. And um, what a wonderful experience it, uh, it, it must have been for you indeed. Yeah. Um,